Hey everybody, it's Chris from pixelatedphotographer.com. Okay, today's little tutorial, what we're going to be doing is going to show you how to make a fake tilt shift picture like this one. Um, tilt shift is, you know, that um, lens that you can strap onto your camera that will make everything kind of look like toys. The problem is they're not cheap, especially when you're not going to use them so often. So, you know, you can mimic something like that in Photoshop. It's not going to be exactly the same. It's not going to be as good as a lens, but hey, you know, as long as you've got Photoshop or GIMP, I imagine, probably you can do this for free. So this is what we're going to end up with. And here is the original picture. Now, this picture isn't a great picture. It's one I took on holiday just randomly, and um, I didn't take the picture for this video. So ideally, what you need to do is go out and take a picture um, at the right angle and kind of think about what you're going to uh, what you're composing before you actually hit the shutter button so what you need is uh, Something at an angle something that's looking down, but not completely down You know not straight down on a car or anything, but you need something at a kind of angle um, And ideally something with a bit of foreground mid and background um, Unfortunately, this doesn't have very good background, but um, what the hell it's the only picture I've got so what we're going to do is we need to, uh, first of all, do all your sharpening before you do anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit filter. We're going to go to sharpen and unsharp mask. And also what I should note is that if you want to try this out exactly like I'm doing here, you can actually get this file from pixelatedphotographer.com. Uh, um, it's in the show notes, the, um, the notes below the video. So make sure you uh, pick up the actual picture from the forums. So what I'm going to do first of all is, as I said, um, do a quick unsharp mask because um, it was a relatively crap picture to begin with. Okay, and then we're going to decide what area we're going to actually blur out and what we're not going to blur out. So what we're going to keep, what thing, the area that we're going to keep in focus is probably something around here because that's probably the most interesting area. So this area is going to be in focus, the rest of it around here is going to be blurred. Okay, so let's get rid of that. So next what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a mask around this area and um, so that we can uh, later on blur everything else out. To make a mask, what you need to do is um, you need to click on this button down here and that will put you in mask mode. And um, you'll notice that the colors change. You've gone from your paintbrush, which is, ooh, there's your paintbrush, if you click it, it now goes to black and then you're in, it goes into a red mode as a default. Um, now, as you can see, even though this is on 100%, you can still see through it. That's because it's on a mask. Now, when you turn it off, you can see that the area is masked. If, you, if I draw through it, you can see the middle bit is not being affected anymore. So if I get rid of that, and I can get rid of my mask as well. So, as I said, this is the area that we want to look at doing. So if we uh, zoom in a little bit here, and what we're going to do is we're going to just paint in and 100%, and I can make a bigger brush, use the um, uh, bracket keys as a shortcut to make the mask, uh, the sorry, the brush size bigger and smaller, smaller, big, smaller, big, okay. So what I need to do is just go around them really quickly doesn't have to be perfect at this point because um, we're going to be fiddling with it in a second what we do need is to make sure that we get around these buildings so if we zoom in a little, little bit and um, actually as I said it doesn't matter if you're slightly over that's fine actually having a little bit of mistake here and there actually adds to the effect Let's go around that like that. Okay, let's keep this tree in. Get that in. Let's get some of these trees here. Let's make sure all these trees are nicely kept in focus because they're kind of interesting. And then probably about here is where we're going to start thinking about blurring it out. So if I zoom out a little bit now, 
you can see now these edges are quite harsh though you know you, just, uh, you see the edge here going all the way around what we need to do is actually fade that out a little bit so what we need to do is um, chuck the opacity down on the brush and I probably for this one I'm going to add a bigger brush size and you know we're on 15 at the moment and then what you need to do is just take your time and go around and fade all this area out and it doesn't matter if, you, if you're going over the edges of where you, you intended to go it's okay like just as you can see all we need to do is just fade it out so there's no hard edges there a very therapeutic <clears throat> and again with the C fade that out a bit with this massive tree here you need to kind of really fade that one out otherwise it's going to look odd Just really fade that out there. Now, when it's not so bad, if it's slightly harsh, it's okay. There you go. So now, what we need to do is take it out of um, mask mode. So click here again, and there you go. So what you need to do is look for any holes that you've probably made um, where you've missed stuff. Um, there's one with me. So you can. So if I go back in, and. Um, I just go back over that a little bit and then undo it. Okay, there you go, we're sorted. So what we need to do now is uh, we need to go through um, and blur out. So obviously this area now is kept normal. This area is kept um, active. As you can see with the paintbrush. No, you can't see it actually. See the paintbrush, that middle bit's not being affected. So if you've got a filter and we've got a blur, um, at this point maybe you may want to um, make sure that you know maybe you want to keep um, an extra copy of your uh, picture. So maybe duplicate it just in case, uh, just in case you want to go back and try it again. And uh, so what you need to do is now go to uh, blur, lens blur, and this will now bring up the the, the kind of weird effects as you can see it's kind of the graduation is really important to have it just like stark is not good now there's a bit of starkness here i can see that you know it's kind of clipped a little bit too hard so what we'll need to do is go in and um, just soften that area up a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually subtract some of that by using the white now it's actually a bit harsh 100%. I'm going to do the same here a little bit. And I noticed a bit up here because I don't really want the C in focus. I just want it to blur into the C kind of thing. Okay, and let's, um, let's just do that. That seems to have clipped a little bit better. Okay, so now if we go back into uh, blur, lens blur. And there you go. There's your effect. So um, at the moment I've got my radius on 33 and maybe we can turn these blade curvature things up a little bit. Okay, so let's hit OK and hopefully this isn't going to take forever. And remember, you know, it's kind of interesting if you just um, just kind of fiddle with them and just try and work out with different focus points is, you know, because that's what the fun is with it. So, you know, especially if you've got lots of like people going over a crosswalk or something like that. That's one that really kind of uh, works quite well. Ah, oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Right, there you go. Obviously, take more time than what I'm doing. <laughs> and there we go, get rid of that layer mask. And there you can see now the effects really starting to kick in. Um, you know, I kind of like having a little bit of um, blur on certain edges of it I don't mind that um, you know like on these edges here I think that's quite kind of cool um, what you can do is you can obviously go back and forth and um, you really do it quite finely if you want to do it quite accurately so now what we need to do is we need to mess with the colors because the colors are just not right on it yet what we need to do is m to create that kind of real kind of toy look so what we need to do is really kind of 
wash it out a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to go to our layer um, effect box here. And what we need to do is choose curves. So let me bring that up there so you can see it. And what we need to do is take the point in the middle. So click and hold and pull it up so that it becomes white. Obviously, you don't want to go up here because that's nuclear white. You don't want to go down here because it's dark. So somewhere just a little bit up, you know. Probably that's okay. So because, you know, when you see the, these little toy things, you know, they're very normally they're quite white. Um, and that's part of the tilt-shift kind of effect. It's actually quite um, very... Um, it lets a lot of light in. So you want to mimic the same effect. So there we go. That's that done. I think that looks okay. Okay, and now if we go back to layers again, as you can see, the layer um, effect is there. So if we make another layer effect, and what we need is one called Vibrance. You can also do it through Hue and Saturation if you wanted to, but I tend to find this does exactly the same thing. And now what you want to do is pull it up, and pull it up until it starts to get quite ridiculous. Until it starts looking toy-like. I think that's okay. So I've got about on thir plus 13 and plus 50 there. Actually, maybe that's a bit too harsh. Bring that down a little bit. Now, obviously, you can start to mesh with the colors if you pull that right down. Black and white, almost. But if we put it up here, there, yeah, I've got that on about 30 and plus 5, something like that. Okay. So one last thing we can do to this picture to make it pop a little bit more is um, is your dodge and burn tools so um, if we go into here here's your dodge tool um, and go over the buildings and um, obviously don't do too harsh you can do it around maybe 40 percent or something and then go over them Ooh. oh helps if you're on the right layer there you go and what you need to do is kind of bring out these these whites of these buildings a little bit because you know you want to make them look kind of plasticky right you know and go over the cars and the little buildings here just to make them look a bit ridiculous you can do it with the trees as well actually you can do it with that whole area here and just give it dabs here and there and of course, you can do the same with the burn tool as well. Any dark, um, you want to highlight some dark areas. There you go, you can see. There you go. It's a bit bright. Actually, I've probably overdone it a little bit. Um, and there you go. That's it. So, um, if as I said, if you want the files for this, you can uh, get them on pixelatedphotographer.com um, or you can hit the link just below. Cheers, guys. Hope you liked it. Um, send me some feedback. Be great. Thank you.